Okay, today we are going to take a look at this Minis Forum MS01 workstation. It's more like actually something that you can run in your rack for running a couple servers in it, but it is a workstation. So what I got here is actually 32 gig, one terabyte US plug 13900H processor version, and it includes a in, uh, built-in internal Iris XE graphics. And yeah, that's the version I bought. There are multiple different versions of this. This costed me roughly $900, I believe around that and yeah there are different options available you should be able to see it somewhere in the screen here scrolling there are different choices different cpus and ram configurations that you can choose from so when you get this this is the box basically i got it a little bit damaged here it shipped with dhl it took a little bit to come to arrive but i think it's fine and let me show you basically is there any no <sighs> You just have to slide it. I believe it's because it's bent here. It's not working properly as it's intended, but a few minutes later, this is the box that you're going to get. And when you open up the box very, very slowly, there you go. This is what you are going to see first thing in the box. This is the computer itself. Let's take it out of the bag that it comes with. And there it is. Beautiful, beautiful. Very, very nice. Okay, and before I start talking about this, let's go very quickly through what is in the box. All right, so this is what else you will get in the box. There is going to be a power adapter. This is output is 19 volt and 180 watt. And um, yeah, input is, it supports basically 100 to 240 volts, 50 or 60 Hertz. So yeah, that's the power plug. This is the plug for that, cable for that. And there's a short HDMI cable, I believe. Let's see how short it is. Yeah, so it's roughly one feet, I think. Yeah, so that's the HDMI cable. Here, we are also going to get the NVMe slot. You will be able to insert basically NVMe cards in here and plug it into the computer inside so we'll take a look at that later you get the tip a slow boot time may be caused by unexpected reboot bios reset ram replacement ssd replacement in general the boot time will resume after one normal reboot and here getting to know your mini pc yeah we are going to talk about all these ports air vent and front and back okay so i'm going to put these aside and also there is the screws we'll see so on here in front you have the power button you have the 3.5 millimeter audio jack this one is a usb 3.2 port and these are usb 2 ports so i think these two best could be used for connecting keyboard and mouse and this is basically air vent for ventilation and cooling and also there is more on top and more on bottom so on the back side uh, this is the most interesting part actually you have the 19 volt 180 watt power jack connection slot here two usb 3.2 ports one full size hdmi port and there is two usb 4 ports in here which can be used with eGPU which we are going to check and see if it is possible uh, two usb two and a half gig ethernet connections and to SFB plus 10 gigabit ethernet connection, right? So these are the most interesting to me at least. That's why I bought this, but 2.5 is very good as well for home servers. And USB 4 ports, I just want to test them with an eGPU. I am not going to use it as a like a gaming computer, but I'm going to test it. As specs wise, this is, as I said, it contains the 13900H uh, Intel CPU, 14 cores, 20 threads, and uh, this one should have 32 gigabytes uh, of RAM. And to look at inside of it, it's actually pretty simple and easy. This notch, this button, just hold and pull. 
that's it really no screws nothing it comes off and in here you will see that there is a PCIe 4 yes this is PCIe 4 port but it supports max x8 speeds not x16 and here we can take off this PCIe cover and put a GPU for instance uh, like for instance a2000 GPU you can put it in here and you can remove this cover but the problem is probably that you won't be able to close the case so for cooling you have to find some alternative methods you might put it in a cool environment cool room like my rack but as I said personally I'm not going to use it with a GPU that's not my the reason I bought it and I can see it underneath this fan there are the two rams the two 16 gig rams right there so total 32 gig and this is the fan connector cie when we flip it over here i can see that's the wi-fi so that's the wi-fi so this is one two three it's uh nvme ssd slot yeah one is already installed so this is the one i bought with one terabyte and there is two more i can insert additional storage if needed but again for my use case in this case i don't need it yeah so pretty neat looking very very nice very lightweight i'm going to weigh it uh, or just check the specs but yeah, this is like maybe one and something pounds or two pounds, maybe one pound around that should be. I'm going to check the weight, but yeah, this is very, very nice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this and power it up. And what I'm going to also do is I'm going to try with two SFPG. I have two different ones. I have a Unify one and I have one from Montera and I have an Ethernet that connects to my router. That's also with a 10G speed, but can be changed to 2.5. I just want to try both ports and then also additionally just to try i am going to use this eGPU basically it contains a 7600 mobile gpu from uh, amd so i will be using this i'm going to try it with this just to see if it works i believe it comes with a windows 11 pre-installed but i'm going to check that if it is there easy so because i'm not going to use it with windows i'm going to try to change it with a, some other operating system probably ubuntu server but i just want to try it before removing the windows i just want to see if it works with this so that being said let's put this aside hopefully it works if it doesn't work we have to shock it but for now let's try it and i will be right back so we connect the power adapter we connect the keyboard and the mouse and the hdmi cable and that's it so everything should be connected now and let's give it a shot okay we are back and on this camera i'm showing you the wattage and how much power the computer is using and here we are going to also start uh, doing some benchmarks so first very quickly we are going to do the vr mark and this is just a for simple test i just want to let it run and see how we do and while we are doing the benchmark here you will be able to see the power usage live nothing else is connected to it at the moment no eGPU or anything like that only the a keyboard and a mouse and we are running the vr mark benchmark okay test is running and we can see the power consumption here live it's currently sitting at yeah it's going up and down but 75 80 85 around 80 watts i would say we get the average of i think 70 something 75 frames for this particular test the fan noise i don't think you can hear it from the microphone because to be very honest it is very quiet okay here we go so we got the score of 3097 so it's obviously not in you know in the class of a gaming laptop or anything like that but we got some scores here i need you to see this because then we are going to also try the same thing with a eGPU connected so let's do a, a 3d mark cpu benchmark just to make sure that the cpu is not really thermal throttling and just working fine right what is expected of the cpu we just want to see that in the benchmark result that's all and i'm going to connect it to an eGPU with the usb 4 port i'm not sure it's going to work or not we'll see but if it works we are going to also try to play some games okay we are going to start a cpu benchmark here power consumption let me bring the microphone very close to the computer see if you can hear the fan I don't think you heard it but yeah I just did it just in case it's very quiet okay 3d mark 
CPU tests started and the power consumption is yeah it's up now to 120 watts yep 120 watts averaging around 120 watts not bad okay so tests are done yeah it used the intel iris graphics uh, built in and uh, yeah it was at the 4k resolution and 150 percent dpi scaling anyway it was for the cpu and this is the results we got it's very good actually it's uh, expected of the cpu and yeah it's very very good score i would say for the cpu and this machine so now let's do a cinebench test Okay, so test is done and we are getting 884 score from Cinebench 2024. And I would say it's great. And as you can see, it's much faster than 5800 AMD Ryzen and 7th gen. Yeah, this is great. And uh, let's try to see if we can get the eGPU to work and then maybe play even some Doom. And I will be right back. Okay, so now the eGPU is connected and let's confirm that. And yes, we have the Radeon 7600M XT connected. So that is working. And now I'm going to try to do some Doom gaming. Let's see if, it, if Doom runs on this machine. Okay, game is loaded. So let's quickly take a look at the settings. And now let's look at the settings. And as you can see, the quality is ultra. And it is on the basically ultra settings now, everything almost. And let's look at the frame. As you can see, it is 150 frame per second. And GPU is at 66 and also the cpu is around 70 something so yeah you can absolutely play i believe so it's totally playable yeah yes absolutely playable you can play with an eGPU in this machine which is expected obviously with that cpu and that gpu it is totally expected so that being said let's get back to the desktop and do a quick test a benchmark with the 3d mark and see how different numbers going to look like and then compare the one without eGPU and with eGPU. okay so now we are going to do a speedway test with the 3d mark to test the gpu eGPU and make sure that it's all working with the usb 4 port and the eGPU is compatible with this basically and everything is fine i did some gaming as you saw and uh, doom was playing very well but we are going to run the test as well to make sure and see the score see the numbers but yes absolutely a, a gpu connected to this computer can be used for gaming or any gpu related you know, application or task and the system itself is very reliable it just out of box it worked everything almost i did not install anything on the windows other than windows updates and then i started installing my applications and everything was working fine So this is the score and as you can see it is totally passable as a gaming machine and this computer can be used for gaming although that's not the main purpose obviously and now we are going to do the test with the ethernet connection and the 10 gigabit port now we are back and we are going to I just I removed all the eGPU and everything and this is bare bone and I am going to first do a Wi-Fi 6 speed test so in order to do that I am going to use I perf to connect and do a speed test to my firewall to the most outer device that I have right before the internet and then we can do internet test speed test as well but let's do pure Wi-Fi test so I perf 3 I see and this is the IP address 
of my router and let's do like 50 threads okay so we get 850 megabits per second 900 megabits per second and that's correct that's good speed i believe for this machine but again you are not buying this device for the Wi-Fi. So what I'm going to do is I am going to disable the Wi-Fi and I am going to use this SFP adapter to basically connect to my 10G connection that straight goes to my router. And this goes in this way. Okay, it is identifying and it is connected. And as you can see, it's 10 gigabit per second. So the connection is established. Let's do the same speed test now with again, the same 50 threads. And yes, we are getting what we were expecting, 10 gigabit per second. And uh, yeah, 1.1 gigabyte per second we can send and receive. So I already have an ass. I'm sure if I want to copy a file, it's going to be around 1.1 gigabyte per second copy any direction so that's the speed so obviously the 10 gigabit ethernet is working perfectly i didn't install any of the drivers it just worked out of box and the wi-fi is very fast and that also works very well eGPU worked well and uh, i had absolutely no trouble using this machine out of box it worked so i would say this is a great buy and the power consumption you also saw that it's not really bad if you want you can disable certain cores in the bios to make it more efficient if you want if you're not using the course but overall as i said i like this machine it serves the purpose that i wanted to use it for i'm going to switch this into an ubuntu machine install uh, tools that will be very close to my firewall so in case even the dns server in my firewall goes down i want to be able to control devices in my network so this is going to be an nginx proxy manager is one of its functionality backup dns server uh, resolver is going to be another i'm going to configure and install a lot of tools on it so so yeah, this absolutely can handle my entire network with that two 10 gigabyte Ethernet SFP plus ports. So yeah, that's about it. I just wanted to show you this great device. And before I go, I just wanted to show you that also Ubuntu server starts properly on this machine. And as you can see, the installer started automatically. I just plugged in the USB that contains the Ubuntu server image. So it automatically also detected the network, the wireless network and the other adapters and even automatically got IP from my router. So everything is working, including the 10 gigabit Ethernet connection in the Ubuntu installer without installing anything. No drivers needed, nothing out of box. Everything is working. So yeah, this is great and uh, exactly what I needed. And let's see what's happening. There we go. The installer even updated itself. And as you can see, this is the latest installer and I am going to use, yes, the entire one terabyte for the Ubuntu. So yeah, this is definitely a great device. And we are going to install this and the installation is going forward. It is installing the latest version and also installing the updates as it's going forward as the ethernet, the 10 gigabit connection is already connected. So yeah, I just wanted to show you this. It's a very fast machine and I love the two 10 gigabit ports. I will finalize the Ubuntu installation, then put it in my rack and start using it remotely. And I already added the SSH key during the installation. So this should work out of box and I'm very happy with the purchase. Thanks again and see you on the next video. Bye for now.